Right. Uh, thank you for having us here. I will start with some maybe basic boring, boring stuff before we go to the principles of design. Uh, we're a small digital agency based in code base in Edinburgh, so definitely for people who are based in Edinburgh or Glasgow or Dundee or Sterling, feel free to stop by. Ready that near the grass market, so always happy to have a chat. Uh, the code base is also the hub for a lot of tech companies, so what we're finding is, although you might not be interested in visualization, there might be other things you want to have a look, and we actually might help you find these opportunities. Um, what we do is actually, we don't do a lot of work with academia. We, our, most of our clients are actually commer from, coming from commercial backgrounds, so that's why we're using colors. The colors are important in the commercial environment. And what we do for our clients is help them to understand their data. Each, each business right now gen generates a lot of information about their, from business activities to HR, so on and so on. Uh, so what we do, we, we use data, we use a design, we use also majority software called Tableau to allow companies to do all sorts of things, majority being the, some cost effectiveness, performance enhancements, basically at, at the end is, it's all about generating income. Um, I would like to say a few things about Tableau. So Tableau, for people who are not familiar, is the leading business intelligence platform for the last four years. And the reason, the reason I'm saying it's a platform is because it allows you to interact with your data on, the, on, on a base, le base level. It gives you the developer environment to actually Link to different data sources, and then actually allows you to publish it on on, on the on the online online services as well. Tableau, is, in essence, is a commercial product. So obviously, if you if if you are a graduate, you will be moving to the, the companies. You, you you will you will be paying for that. But what Tableau does is, I think, it's the only com commercial business that I know has a very strong academia program. What does it mean for you is, if you are as a student, a researcher, or a tutor you could get a developer license for free as long as you can prove it that you, you're applying by university and, and the research or tuition you're making is not for profit. What does it mean for you is, as, as Joe mentioned about the different tools, so you've got different tools for mapping, different tools for data, data statistics and so on and so on. Tableau evolves every year. So for example, last year we added uh, our integration into the system. We've got dynamic maps, we've added connectivity to the software called Mapbox. What does it mean is you can start bringing Google Maps into your visualization and plotting information on top of it using the heat maps, for example. Uh, Tableau allows you to use Java to embed your visualizations into your blog and, and so on and so on. So in terms of the, the package you can get for free, if I would be a student person rather than going to diff, like maybe using Python to, to, uh, to collect information, then using R to actually make the presentation and then use a third tool to actually make the visualization, Tableau does it all for you and it, and it can get, you can get it for free. Now, the good thing about it is there is something called Tableau Public and that's basically a platform for authors, authors to publish their work to the worldwide, on worldwide net. And in terms of the pure numbers, so far we've got 190,000 independent authors on Tableau Public. Uh, we've got 20, over 25,000 visualizations published every month. And a lot of them are actually based on open source data. So the good thing about Tableau Public is you can look at the visualization, but a lot of authors actually enables you to download it on your, on, your, on your PC and actually look how it was done. So if you find something interesting and you think, okay, I'll be brilliant for my data, I don't know how to do it, you can just download it or actually email author and ask, can you help me deliver the same thing, which is, which is brilliant. And finally, on average, there's 2.5 million views across pub Tableau Public. So if you're a researcher, researcher or, or a student looking for the alternative ways of publishing or promoting your work, well that, you can do it all for free within one single platform. The good thing about it also as well, if you, if you, if you are towards end of your studies or you're, if you are thinking about moving to commer commercial environment, a lot of companies is using tab Tableau as well. So that's another thing in your CV that you can build as part of your portfolio basically. Uh, for more information, just you can pick up our details from the website. Uh, we'll be happy to, to get to, to pass your contacts to below or, or activate your licenses or basically if you've got any other questions relating to your tuitions. If you would like, for example, to use Tableau as a platform in your tuitions program for, for students to, 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 enha to enhance the, the enhance program, we'll be happy to kind of support you with that or pass you through. Again, we are working very closely with Tableau, so, so definitely feel free to get in touch with us. We will stay after this, this talk for like another, I think it's a half an hour break, so just, just you know, 
to start talking to us basically and hopefully we can help you with. Um, before we go to actually the principle of design, now, now Joe said it's a 50% of the, the 50 of the information that bra the brains collects is comes to the site. Actually, our, our figure is close to 70. I think we might be using slightly dif dif different, different, different researches. Uh, remaining 30% is, is collected by dif different senses. So in most simplistic way, what does it actually mean for your brain is our brain is trained to instantly analyze uh, and categorize the information in, in the, the most crude, in the most crude example, most simplistic example would be about our, our survival. So what the brain tells you is, if what you are seeing is, is it actually something that will eat you, or can I eat it? And that's our most simplistic basic instincts. Now, how it actually leads to the principles of design. Well, principles of design are trying to simplify it for us and tell us what we should use in, in, in a successful visualization and what we shouldn't use. Okay? What I'm going to show you is the seven principles. Six of them are, our proper principles being taught, if, you, if, you, if you're a design student, you will be taught the six principles. Seven principles is our own, which we like to, to use. All the examples are the commercial examples. We kinda, some of them are, we just kind of anonymize the data, but all of you, you, you can see, is, is we, or we kind of sold it, or it's actually used for mar marketing purposes. Um, design one is repeated elements. Now, what you did here is, there's a company called GF Smith, and they are basically selling paper. So what we did here is we used the repeated elements for user to interact with it. So you can, rather than having a drop-down selection for, for your colors, you're actually using the, the colors on, on, in the shape of the circle on the top selection, then using a secondary selection in terms of the squares. So user can very, user can very quickly select the color, select the, the, the tone of the color to get their pricing and, the, and their, um, the, the depending on the sizing. Now, this simple visualization repl replaced, I think it was 150 page PDF. Where usually you, you download the PDF, look at the index, find the color you want, and manually try to find out how much it would cost you to, to you know, whatever, paint your room. So, so, very simple technique. Contrast, that's probably one of the most obvious ones, used by everyone, seen by everyone, but people probably are not even realizing it's one of the principles of design. Um, what we did here, we did, um, for, for people who are drinking coffee, we, we created our Edinburgh, Edinburgh Independent Coffee Guide. If you go to Tableau Public, you can find us as a number telling that's fully interactive. You can have a look where we would like to have a coffee. The most simplistic uh, uh, usage of, of, of a contrast. Now, the other thing you will notice about contrast is it's basically available on your life. And especially if you're in a pub, in a club, when there are little steps marking black and, black and yellow, the contrast can be found anywhere. It's like quite often you just see it, you don't even think about it. Uh, emphasis. I find quite often that the emphasis is actually underutilized for some reasons. It's, again, it's quite quite obvious one, but a lot, I think a lot of people can actually forget about it. What we've got here is um, history of Tour de France. So on the bottom we've got a year that Tour de France happened and the, the length of the bar is the average, fastest average speed in each tour. Now, what, what you will notice here, there are a few, a few things. There's a couple of gaps and there's one black section which we kind of emphasize for, for certain reasons. So, the gaps are basically World War I, World War II. The race did not occur. You still have to kind of compensate for the years. That, so, so, it actually t tells you that there, there was a gap for, for, the, for a number of years. Now, the black section is actually what is called Lance Armstrong era. So, some People inside the committee are arguing, well, we should probably scrap the records and remove them from the books. Well, the race still happened. You know, it, it, you, why you wouldn't show it? So what we are just trying to, to help users understand, you know, probably you might lean to maybe ignoring or not focusing on those results. So that, that, that's as, as simple as you can get with emphasis. Uh, balance and scale. Um, Again, I think from what Joe was saying, she was referring to the single bars, single charts, single visualizations. When we are doing from the commercial point of view, we're doing the full visualizations interactive that can be interactive by the user. Balance scale is kind of important not to make the visualization too clunky. Uh, and, and balance scale allows you to actually prioritize your, your chart. So what we've got here is we've got 2011 census. Again, if you go to, our, to the number telling public, you can just have a play with that. Find, find, your, find your area and see, get them more information. So, our focus basically was Scotland, 
So the map takes the most out of it. Also, going back to tools that Joe said, that shows you the, the automatic integration of map without actually bringing any other software. We could use Google Maps where we could use uh, Mapbox, which is super, super easy to integrate, but these things are already available here. So if, if your research, if your data already contains some form of a lot long uh, information or postcodes, you can use it. Now, the good thing about the maps is that Tableau invests heavily into it. So just a couple of months ago, they added detailed postcodes for all Europe. Sorry, all countries in European Union, and except EU, uh, UK right now. So for UK, it's only the, the, the first three characters. So it's a short, short, short postcode, but for other countries, the full postcode. So especially during any, any form of social studies uh, and in looking at other countries, you don't need to worry about going to, to other online tools when you have to kind of put information in, get, get your lot long, and then plotting them up. Software will do it for you quite easily. So just going back quite, quite quickly to, to balance. So we use the map as a, as a main, main priority here. And then we use a couple of things, which is kind of average age. Uh, over, so ov overall average age in Scotland based on census 2011 is 45 years old. And average distance majority of people travel to work is under two kilometers. So then once we, you are going through the individual uh, postcodes, you can actually see your, your own area. OK, good time. Are we kind of here? Yeah, OK. Movement. Um, now, movement is related to actually movement of the eye across the visualization. What you want to avoid is a, an end kind of end kind of streets where, where you would put maybe a fixed text or, or or an object that allows you to travel through visualization, but then you have to kind of reverse back to the same same way. You, as, as, if possible, you want to encourage an eye to move in a certain certain path. So what you did here is, is a very simple visualization, only three elements. But what it should do is it sh you should move one in circle clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, harmony. Harmony is not a principle on its own. And actually, it fits from the previous previous uh, principles. And what harmony does is, using the principles, you should find, that, should I find a correct balance of making the visualization informative as possible, as easy to use as possible. So we use the third approach here. We use the, we use the third for the, for the map. And the remaining one is actually the bar chart. So what we did actually here is uh, this chart allows user to estimate, can we go to renewable, uh, sorry, to renewable, I think it was renewable, sorry, to biofuels. How much will cost us? What is the comparator of the how much I'm spending right now towards the how much money I will spend on the, on the biofuels and also what is the go government incentive? So again, although the map is simple as possible, but the bar just actually in, in, includes three measures. So we're using a little bit of contrast, we're using a little bit of balance, but user can quite easily type in their own costs over the course of 12 months and actually, actually can see, am I am I being I will will I be better off or should I actually stay on the current 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 uh, uh, energy I'm using? Now this is the seventh, the seventh principle, which kind of is our, our own number telling principle in a way, it's interaction. Now because a lot of our work uh, is coming from the commercial environment and we need to make sure that the visualizations we, we are creating are approachable, understandable by the users. A lot of, these, a lot of the guys, a lot of our users are not as tech savvy or have a lim very limited knowledge and, well, not, 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 not the best example, but uh, you'll be surprised how many, how, how many employees, although they're working on, on their own data, they don't actually fully understand it. So our job is to make it as clean as possible without creating any extra noise by adding too, too much into the visualization. There's definitely finding a harmony, finding a balance of how many objects you want to plot into the visualization. Again, again it's, if it's a single chart, you don't have to worry about it. But if you want, if you want to prepare something more interactive, you want to stay away from over, over, overcrowding, overcrowding it too much. So there's are the examples. Now, I would definitely, so tomorrow, Becky will, will do the workshop on the Hackaday. Uh, so I think it's around 60 minutes to 90 minutes. What we'll do tomorrow is for people who actually want to learn more, we just kind of show you how to, set up, how to set up Tableau Public, how to link to the data, how to do a simple visualization. And we already kind of, for people who are attending the, the workshop, you can, you, can, you can download everything required. Now, for people who that do not attend the workshop and they would be interested in actually looking at the Tableau platform. And again, uh, it could be, if you're a student researcher, it doesn't, doesn't matter as, as long as you, is, is your work on a commercial. Please get in touch with us. We will we'll pass you to the, to, the, to the responsible people. And that, 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 like I said, especially when you said that you, when the Joe showed the tools, there's so many of them available. What, you, you, what you're getting with Tableau academic program, you're, get, you're getting the enterprise lever commercial product 
that you can use, basically use for free. And even if it's a year, if it's you, you, two, you, well, yes, fair enough, you might find it, especially around statistical amount, like the, it's a limited implementation of R, but if you are not a coding savvy, if you just want to analyze your data and just get on with that, that's a tool for you to go. Because actually you can, code, you, you can implement Python, you can implement Java, you can do all this fancy stuff if you want, but it's not, it's not a prerequisition. There are lots of tutorial information uh, and, and on, available on the Tableau website, so it, it definitely, even if you won't attend the workshop, they won't, you, won't, you won't find any problems with, with, with firing it up. Now, Tableau is very heavily involved in academia, and, and that's fine to follow over, so there's no money for them. But what they're looking for is actually creating a, almost a, giving it to the people with skills who, who can push their product further. Tableau invests 20% of their revenue in the research, so there's a lot of there are a lot of suggestions coming from the, from the community. So what they're hoping to achieve is giving to the researchers, to the scientists, and then they can come back and say, oh, guys, it would be good to have this or that. And they can, they can push their product, the product farther. There's a lot of additional products around Tableau as well, especially for, the, for, the, for, the, for other, other integrations. You can, you can integrate Tableau within, within other applications, within your blogs, so, so that there's lots of flexibility, flexibility as well. Now, few. And I, I don't know from the top of my head that there are already a few universities in Scotland that cooperate with Tableau. They do have their own servers. What does it mean is if you are tutor in one of these universities, again, if you would get in touch with us, we can find out for you, do you have the, the servers implement on your servers implement on your side? But what does it mean for you? Is rather than relying on Tableau Publix, so if you if you would use Tableau as a part of your your, uh, your tuitions. You don't need to ask your students to, to, to publish their work on Tableau Public. You could actually t publish it on the university site servers. So you can maybe use more sensitive information because that, 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 that may be a, an issue for, for some of the people. But again, I can't tell from the top of my head who's using already the server, who's, got, who's, got, who's got access to Tableau servers from the university side, but that would be not a problem to find out. So feel free, we, again, it's no money for us. So we won't, you won't end up us trying to sell you something because you know, it is for free. But definitely, you know, we're happy to help. So, yes. Now we'll end over there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any, any questions? Any questions? Like I said, we'll be staying for another half an hour, 40 minutes after the, after. It, so, mm -hmm. happy to answer anything else or over email, one way or another. Well, well, first of all, I wouldn't be probably Becky is the best person to answer that because she is actually the graphic, you know, this is a designer. But I think the fun thing with colors is again, the examples we're showing, the, 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 some of them were, were commercially viable. So again, you have to take into account what your client client requests from you. So, so from our perspective, yes, we suggest let's do this. But, but if, you're, if you're running a business and your logo or your whole website is done in a certain way, you want to keep your, you, won't, you wouldn't go back and change all the theme of your, your paperwork into the, from orange to whatever. So sometimes we don't have actually the greatest control over it. We will suggest let's do this or that, but there's, there's as much as, as, as we can do. Does it answer the question? Ish. Hopefully, yeah, <laughs> sort of, yeah. Uh, just wondering, is this just visualization software or you can do some basic special analysis as well? Yes, can you repeat, sorry? Yeah. Some special analysis, like network analysis, you mentioned postcode data you have. Yeah. So can you do some special analysis on that? Well, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Uh, the, the, the analytics you can do is based on, on the data you got. The, 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 I, I mentioned postcode because that's, the, that's the, f the feature, embedded feature right now that you wouldn't, won't get anywhere else. So for example, if you want to use the postcode in a map box, you will still have to translate your data into the lat long or whatever is required to plot it on the map. But as far as I know, it's basically the, the, what Tableau is, it's, it's, it's an enterprise level business intelligence tool. It's it meant to fit all purposes. Obviously it won't, it probably fits 90% of the purposes. Again, academia is slightly different. You will have data that might not exactly fit it, but the best thing would be just to test it. 
And again, I don't know exactly what type of data you kind of you would be referring to. You know, the specialized data. It's it's being used in medicine. It's being used in astronomy. It's it's being it's being used all, all, all over places. So for me, it's not actually a problem. I'm, when I'm, whenever I'm looking at these things, it's okay. This is the information I've got. This is the the, the questions I need to ask and the answers I need to get. And in 90% of the cases, I can do it with Tableau. With the rest of it, I might relate to Python or R or other means. But again, I, I doing. If, I, if I'm using the Python, I would do it separately and then bring it back to Tableau. Just, just it's so easy to visualize things because you're just kind of literally dropping your results on the screen and you can just kind of build the, the visualization you require. Yeah. But like, actually, if, happy, if, you, if you get in touch with us and say exactly what you're looking for, I would be happy to, to tell you, yes, we can do it, or, or no, or maybe suggest something, something else. Uh, there's few things I didn't show, and again, that they'll show it on a, on a workshop. There's, this is a way because we, we mostly concentrate today on, on the charts, but what the, there are things that there are embedded functions you can you can actually use words and then based bring the, the actually numbers. It's quite hard to explain without actually showing that. But I, are you participating in the workshop tomorrow, by any chance? If you could maybe check with Becky like towards the end, I think because the plan was to leave maybe an extra half an hour just to move it to totally interactive and people can actually ask things. So if you could leave it for tomorrow and I think and Becky will show you basically what you can do with that. Yeah, it's, it's just hard to actually show it without the, the, the having a software available right now. Okay, so I think that brings us to the end to move on, but thank you very much, right. Paolo. Thank you. Hopefully it was... <laughs>